Kalen and Connor dropped their 257 potty yesterday. Um, do you guys all have a listen? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll listen to about the first uh, 10 minutes of it. Doesn't do his again. <laughs> Too busy on IG Live. Hey, this ain't Gary V. Fucking turn it off. <laughs> all righty. 10th of April. Good Friday. What's good, boys? Here we are. What's up, brother? What's up, baby? What's up? Hey, is that normie or what's doing? <laughs> Catchy, isn't it? Eh? They it say is. it is, man. What Everything is... you bloke say is too fucking catchy. It does my head in. Yeah, just nah, Chico, Chico's, Chico's the one. Like he'll just keep saying things over and over again, and just <laughs> flops it to the ground, and you end up fucking catching on. Kills What's it, up, baby? <laughs> um, yeah, hectic few days of news, and we got some breaking stuff. We'll get on to that. Um, NRL has a date. The big. I've never looked forward to the twenty eighth of May in my life, and apparently it's a it's a day that we should cherish they've got a date what does that mean jackson in your little world of the journalism land what have you seen and maybe from a warrior's perspective as well you got a bit of mail on that yeah i wish i did <laughs> if i'm the expert in this panel i wish i had something, it's it's, something. It's like trying to up, get, you're like trying to get information out of the fucking kremlin or the all blacks at the moment man like i think it's it's not the fact that you can't get information it's that no one has it like the people that i typically ask for like hey mate what are you hearing blah 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 Genuinely don't either they don't know or they're just off me. But because you kept look, spraying they've them got on a staff writer. Yeah, exactly. They've got a they've got a date, so that's cool. Um, nothing else is what it seems like at the moment. Like I've I was, we were supposed to be on a Zoom chat with Cameron George, um, Warrior CEO, last night, which did eventuate. Obviously, he got caught up with all the NRL stuff. Um, I'm sure someone will chat. To, I'm not working today. I'm sure someone will chat on today. But um, look, in terms of what it means for the Warriors, it still was very much up in the air because of the government restrictions. So I saw the NRL hasn't actually, or rather the Minister of Sport and Rec here, hasn't actually got anything formal from the NRL. They said, you know, we're talking to both government departments. That hasn't actually happened yet. So um, I don't know how the boys are going to get there. I don't know when they're going to get there. I don't know anything in terms of how it's going to look. But I read but, something man, this like morning that about the Warriors scale. were looking at exploring if they do need to shift over to Australia, like what it looks like bringing the families across as well. So at least they're thinking about it from that perspective and they're not just putting yeah. the boys away in ISO. I don't think that's an option. I don't think the government would okay families going over for a visit. That doesn't, to me, that doesn't make sense. Not it's going to be one of those things like, if, yeah, if you, if you get a week to say goodbye to your family, you've just got to bite the bullet and, you know, do a couple of weeks without them, um, which is easy for me to say I don't have a family, but... Yeah, look, I don't know what it's going to look like. Um, I hope that the competition goes on and it's and it's all sweet. But in terms of like, you know, bigger than the game, the government perspective, the government and the NRL are not, they're not even on, they haven't spoken. So there's a whole bunch of hurdles to jump through before we get to May 28th. But fuck, at least we have a date, man. And Ice, mate, your best mate, ended up on the back page again. What's doing? <laughs> Yeah, it's actually for a good reason this time. So that, How that, good. That, yeah, that definitely helps. But um, yeah, I think, I think I'm with Jackson here. I think it's just a date that's thrown up in the air and the amount of hurdles that you need to jump over to get there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like For me, it just felt, you know when you just have a goal and, you just go, and then someone goes, put a date on it because then it, it's not a dream anymore, it's a goal. Uh, I feel like they're kind of just doing that and what it looks like. And I've talked to a few of the boys that are sort of in the know. And they're like, I was like, how good is this? Like, footy's back. And they're like, oh. So just that no, reaction. Yeah. yeah, just that reaction on their own was sort of enough to give me – because these, these guys are pretty straight shooters as well. So, um, And someone gave the analogy of like, even though – like, if you step on shit on your shoes and wipe it off, you can still smell the shit. And that's what the 2020 season is going to be like. Like, even though yeah. we may get one through, it's just going to have a, like a shit stain on it um, throughout the whole year. So, but in the on the op, po, like positive side of it, like obviously talking to footballers and they're like, "Fuck, May the 28th." Like, like you said, Lukey, like never even thought of May the 28th before, but everyone's thinking of it now. So, yeah, any press is good well, press. It's almost one of those ones. Almost, but it's like like it's great to have that date and sort of that light at the end of the tunnel. But if it actually goes through, who knows, man. Yeah. Well, Ice, what about, mate, what about in terms of, we spoke about on Wednesday, obviously things have changed with the UFC, but the UFC it being an opportunity for them to capture the entire sports world audience. The NRL is not global, but what about in terms of if they are able to be the only, the only lot playing, capturing that maybe rugby, netball, soccer fan base? I mean, if it's the only sport on, fuck, we're going to watch it, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. Um, I've seen a little tweet from someone ages ago. They're like, I'm watching like Australian rugby because it's the only thing on and I love it. So there's an element of that to it where we can capture like the casual fan the same way Origin does. Like everyone watches Origin. For, they don't care if football's on or not. Like 
that's like you're either sport Queensland or New South Wales. But in saying that, once like they say that like we can capture that, but the thing with the UFC, it doesn't like contradict with any other sports. Like, do you yeah. know what I mean? Besides potentially boxing, where we may we may get a few NFL um, fans watching our sport right now, but then once NFL comes back on, like they don't give a fuck about rugby league. So everyone talks about global expansion of the game. I'm I'm, I'm kind of against it. Like besides England, um, I think I think rugby league should be like the AFL and just fucking let's let's get our own backyard in order first before we try and take over the world before we try and head over to New York. Like you look at AFL, even though they're in a bit of trouble, but their, their game day experience as a fan is fucking 10 times better than anything we can produce besides Origin and, and NRL. So I think this is a massive reset button of coronavirus is going to be huge for us. But then like, let's just focus on our own backyard. Let's dominate this first. And like, I know what you're trying to say, but like, if I'm an NBA fan and I watch two games of rugby, it's like us watching like Gaelic football over in Ireland. You're like, what's this? Like, fuck, this looks weird. And then, oh, this is fun. But then after a while, you're just like, fuck, here's my sport again. Fuck, you're not buying game. jerseys. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I was, um, they got sports cards? I was, yeah. Well, if we're going to scrap the last one, here's like an interim topic that we can fill it with. I was having a chat with a guy yesterday and we were talking about obviously super rugby is struggling at the moment and there's a massive talent pool over there. Is that something that clubs could be looking at to try and sneak a bit of talent across into the NRL? You've got Super League over there on shutdown as well. Could a potential loan system for some of the boys playing over there? Could that be something worth clubs looking at? Or are they just, like, similar to what you said, Ice, you just need to sort of focus on what you have at the moment? Um, yeah, like, obviously, talent is talent. Like, like you walk past a kid on the street and you go, fuck, you'd make a good back row. Probably, like, every third bloke in Auckland. But you're just, like... Um, like every, every bouncer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez, who do you play for? Do you, do you want a contract? Oh, it, feels okay. like some, it feels like that sometimes, but... Um, I think rugby is a lot more like we talked about rug- rugby league trying to go global. I think rugby is actually a global game. Like you can go to any country in the world and they're, they're probably going to play it. So, and they, I think, was it you that was telling me, Jackson, that their World Cup made like 300 million bucks or something? And, yeah. 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 So their, their rugby, yeah, like that's the difference. Money, that's the difference. And, and the reason why is because like it's a private school game, it's a white collar game. So you got all these guys that used to play rugby as kids. Now they've grown up and they're fucking executives of banks and, and it's very white collar sport, so it's not hard to get funding for these types of um, sports. So, will they jump over? I don't think so. There may be a couple guys that are keen to test the waters, but the massive appealing thing for NRL compared to say um, New Zealand Rugby Union was the money. Like only yeah. only the big dogs can get over a million in um, say boating barracks and guys like that. A lot of them have to go overseas before they they get their big paychecks, aka like a Lima Supawanga going to London Wasp and stuff like that. So the actual money they they sort of bank on branding with the All Blacks and like oh you want to play for the All Blacks and play for your country and all this political pride sort of shit. And then they can see guys in rugby league getting fucking paid like almost double them when they they're just playing club football and they're in their same place all the time. So will they jump over? Maybe a couple, but as a whole, I don't see it happening. Interesting. Anything, Jackson, or move on? Yeah, sorry. I, I just cut out at the end there, but um, you can hear me still, sweet yeah. still. Um, yeah, yeah, look, um, in terms of capturing talent, um, rugby, obviously, I'm a bit of a homer when it comes to rugby. So for me, I think the best athletic talent is in rugby. So it's going to be great for the game. But um, the funny thing, Ice, you'd be interested in this, man, the breakdown of the you touched on the money like the money in general terms i believe is still in rugby league just because of the 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 way that new zealand rugby contracts obviously i can't speak about australian rugby union i don't know anything about it i won't pretend i think, to. I think it's the same as um nzru right it's very incentive based so like um i'm gonna i'm probably gonna fuck up some of these numbers but roughly winning the super rugby title is like an extra 70 grand right seven zero seventy thousand dollars runner-up gets like 30k and i think the top of your conference gets like 25k something that's per player all Blacks on top of that, you make the All Blacks, you get another, let's say, 70K, right? You win the uh, Rugby Championship, there's another 100K. You win the World Cup. Like, so these boys, they even get an individual. So Bowden Barrett was the top point scorer, there's another 70K. Rico is the top try scorer, there's another 70K. So when you take the, when you take the rugby off it and they go, oh, they've still got these big contracts. Their contracts aren't as big as rugby league players. They make more money because of all the All Blacks and the incentives and all that and the partnerships they get out of being aligned with that global brand. But in terms of pure contracts fuck you're better off playing 5-8 for the dragons at this point mate <laughs> surely the wallabies must be broke fuck you know <laughs> no no wins around there all right we just this is a big news from this morning dana white um spoke to brett okamoto our boy over at espn he's not really our boy but he's now we've quoted him twice nah, he's our boy. Go on. um no i'm an i'm a helwani fan anyway um <laughs> yeah disney espn pulls a plug on dana white going ahead with 249 
All other events have been postponed indefinitely. That means no Fight Island, although Dana said he's still building it. So who knows what that works out to be. Um, yeah, it's, it's a weird one. It's like you really get it. The co-main event, Rose, Thug Rose, um, she pulled out. She had two deaths in her family due to coronavirus. Um, so it was obviously quite close to home. She's quite an emotional person anyway. Um, so I didn't think she'd be fighting and she, she just pulled out. So weird times. Literally, I think that means no sport. Like that was like the only sport that we all had. And mm. that's gone. I don't know. There was a, it was a casino in, in um, LA that was holding it. So Dana wants to take the business back there to thank them and put on a massive show because they were coming to the party. I don't know. Ice, you're not the biggest UFC guy, but now we have nothing. Um, yeah, I just I really sort of fell into that sort of UFC island. Like it's kind of just, you know, when a rich bloke sort of just builds a batch of a nice part of the beach. And I think that's just what he's going to do now. Can they still host an event there one day? I think it'd be cool. Like we think we, we touched on the fire Festival earlier before. And you, do you remember that fucking promo they did with um, oh, like Kendall Jenner and that? But yeah, that, yeah. Like how good did that fucking like look promo vid look? Imagine that promo vid for like, um, like UFC. Yeah. So I, I feel like it'll still be, oh fuck, there's a spider in there. Oh, hey. <laughs> Going live. Um, it's only a small one anyway. Uh, yeah, but I, I feel like um, that promo, like the drone shots, so, like, I just think from a marketing standpoint, always, always just see, see the drone shots out in the boat and like just a speedboat taking off and shit like that. Like, that's Mate, a good, dr- a good drone shot can get me to spend some serious cash, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Tex um, Hoy. Yeah, yeah. Um, look, I, I think the, the biggest shock to me was that Dana being asked to stand down, like, in our lifetime, it's the UFC is synonymous with Dana White. So the fact that Disney and ESPN have stood him down, um, whether they just think he's been too cowboy and cavalier with what he says, but he's fucking always done that. Like, he's, he's a billionaire for a reason, man. This guy's built this thing off taking risks and saying dodgy shit and promoting, you know, Connor smashing bus windows and all that sort of stuff, putting Greg Hardy on co-main events. So I don't know what they, you know, they knew what they were getting into bed with and now they want to kick him out. It seems bizarre, man, but... Look, it's shit that the UFC, that 249 is not going ahead. I hope they can still get international fights. Um, I saw Izzy on Ariel Hawani uh, yesterday or the day before said that he'd be down to do it. So, fuck, you want to talk about a good promo? You get Izzy walking down the beach, a couple of birds under his arm, kicking, <laughs> kicking cunts in the head in some fucking <laughs> island somewhere. Like, they can he's still already, do it. He's already thought of his um, intro, I reckon, for that island. No, he's going to have, you know, fire fucking dances, everything, man. He'll be on. So. But you got, um, well, you got to, this is a little bit off topic, you got to remember Apple got rid of um, Steve Jobs one time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they use the word stand down. So to me, that means, you know, he's... He's back down, just stop doing what you're doing. Oh, yeah, shut up. Yeah. Shut up over there, man. <laughs> he, he says, you know, but Dana, Dana's just doing Dana shit, man. He says some wild stuff. So I don't know. It's shit, man. I was hoping, I was really looking forward to that fight, the Gaethje um, Ferguson fight as well. So who knows, man? Who knows where they're at? Can you guys still hear me? Because you guys are frozen. On my screen, you broken up, Lukey? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Frozen. Yeah, just frozen. Again, item number three. What do we do without a uh, without a moderator? What's doing? Fuck. Yep. Well, there we go. Hey. Oh, you back? Oh, you back? My internet what, connection what is on. It said, my, I think my internet just went in and out. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah Surely get the NBN out here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> don't, leave, don't leave me with ice again, all right? <laughs> that was some of our best chat, too, once you were gone. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> we realize we don't have anything to talk about when you're not here. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we go? It's like without a halfback, eh? So how yeah, the boys how, get how on the them field? vintage tees gone? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> With, um, I don't know how far you guys went with the UFC stuff, but um, I wanted to go to you, Jackson, one of your mates, Kai. Um, he's done the fight on the boat. That was a pretty cool video he put up a few weeks back. That was interesting. Yeah, yeah, that was Kai's um, pre-UFC days. He was knocking, knocking blokes out on cruise ships. I think, um, he'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he was the first like sanctioned fight, MMA fight in international waters. He knocked him out in seven seconds. But, I saw um, him, yeah, smashed like, him. Seven seconds? Holy Seven fuck. Seconds, bro. I know the poor bloke didn't know it was coming. The big over influences right of the Dortmund. wild shirt. What does that say? <laughs> what do you wear? What is that? Influences uh, in- or city. 
Uh -huh, I thought you had a bit of influences in the wild merch. You got on the bandwagon full time. <laughs> oh, the best, best app in the world. <laughs> yeah. Oh, best, best yeah. fucking. Uh. All righty. So we'll move on. Um, Kaylin and Connor dropped their 257 potty yesterday. Um, do you guys all have a listen? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll listen to about the first uh, 10 minutes of it. Doesn't do his homework again. <laughs> too busy on ig live hey this ain't gary v if i can turn it off <laughs> <laughs> i was going to say it'd be hard to get in your podcast rotation um yeah mm. i thought it was mad it was cool to hear that sort of perspective from the boys jackson what do you think yeah i like it was the first podcast i mean every first podcast is going to have its sort of teething issues not the ice project out the gate hot but like <laughs> you can tell the biggest oh, man, you got a bit of brown on that nose man just <laughs> just give it a bit yeah. of a <laughs> um, <laughs> biggest takeaway for me was that like you can tell you know when you can just tell that it's going to be good like they just naturally bounced off each other like even though you could tell they're a little bit uncomfortable and it was a little bit sort of you know like they see it as soon as the red light goes on they kind of fall into their shells a bit yeah but they just like there's a natural flow to them and it helps that they're just a couple of cool guns so um i know they spoke about getting they are very cool guys eh? they are very cool, cool man. like connor watson's low-key man like everyone knows kaylin's the man but fuck connor's pretty cool like <laughs> yeah i reckon cool i reckon connor's the undercover one eh? like he's, he's like, yeah. like is um, he cool is he cooler than kaylin oh, you take I mean, out you take away football ability <laughs> and oh. you just you judge him just purely as like kaylin versus uh like who's cooler like yeah the the i can't look past the goosey so i can't answer that question yeah, but no, yeah. no footwork i'm going connor yeah but um <laughs> no, no, it was cool, cool. It was cool listen. when they it threw it cool to listen. the fans and stuff like that like who were the three people you'd have dinner with who's your idols and all that sort of stuff connor's got a bit of a thing for sophia richie i thought that was interesting i know he came out of, he came out of the game he came out i think hot. the biggest thing the biggest thing for me is like i know they spoke about i'm not trying to give them advice on how to do their podcast but they spoke about like they're gonna get different guests in that. Like, they, were, they were so so cool and so natural, but I reckon they just do it by themselves, man. Like, yeah, get guests in from time to time, but fuck just those two chatting, I'd be all about it. You do want the you do want the element of like just the weird funny bloke to come in. Like, you know, Normie jumps on my best podcast is when Normie comes in and just his first train of thought is so fucking random and he'll just say it. You're like, yeah. what the fuck are you talking about? And like Chico's got that element of too. So the thing with Connor and Kaylin, both cool as guys and they're both like super chilled, but very similar at the same time as well. So I think yeah, throwing right. that sort of fucking random person in every now and then, not all the time, you know, sort of Mario Mario Finnick used to jump on the footy show like maybe His once caravan. in two, three weeks. Yeah, in this mm. caravan for like two, three minutes. Like, there would be the element of that to it. But like you said, they're, they're, they are both very cool guys. They both speak very, very well. And um, Connor, uh, Kalen's smart. Like, Kalen's like, if he's, if he's anyone that can, like, we were looking at um, Carlos Spencer and like, Carlos Spencer was like the guy for us if he grew up in New Zealand and he was oh, yeah. Quaid's favourite player. He's my favourite union player as well. He's just fucking cool. And you just think, imagine if that kind of had Instagram back in the day. Kalen's that guy now. Even like Sean mm. Johnson to an extent, like, if Sean yeah. Johnson had Instagram like 10 years ago, like. I haven't watched He, he dropped a vlog. I haven't watched that yet. Yeah. Yeah, he dropped a vlog. He's doing lives with um, uh, Chad Townsend last yeah. night. So the, boy, the boys are picking up the idea of what you should be doing to self-brand and Kalen's mm. doing it the best. And Kalen's yeah. meant to start vlogging, but he said he's not comfortable with speaking in front of a camera. Um, I think Potty helps with yourself. that. Yeah, Potty, Potty definitely helps with that. But someone's like, Potties are easier to do because they're just natural. You're just having a conversation with someone. So they feel more, but imagine being Kalen Pong and walking through the airport and like walking around with a camera like that. Like Everyone's going to go, oh, but he, he'll start thinking, you go, fuck. People thinking I'm a fuckwit. Well, it's all right for me because no one really knows who I am. So I'm just walking around going, hey, welcome back to the vlogs and shit like that. But <laughs> definitely got legs. Um, it's, I think that's going to go a lot of places. They got the 275 or 257? 257 Collective. 257 Collective. So this little fucking hub of football players that are cool and fucking creative as well. I you think know, with Tex Hoys in it as well, they can all yeah. take photos. They're doing podcasts now. They're just going to be content machine. Yeah. It reminds me of that guy that Justin Escalona ice that I showed you of YouTube very much that um, highly edited vibe, mad photography. And then like the name 1340, that was his dorm room. Apartment. Yeah. Collective, yeah, 257, yeah, yeah. That's their, what must be their address. I think they said, and then collective. So it wouldn't be surprised if those boys have seen him on YouTube. Yeah, that, that's like now you say that, it's just like it's copy and pasted, isn't it? The 660 yeah. model. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, the yeah. fake 660. Yeah, but yeah, Mad Potty, looking forward to the next one. I don't know how frequent they're going to be doing them, but they're an ISO, they don't have much to do. 
Yeah, the, the, I think the big challenge for them and everyone, like everyone that sort of started vlogging, or once the season starts, and then say you lose three games in a row, that's when that's when cunts start to go missing. So I remember that there was two years ago, there was a thing called the Dragons Bus, and Latsy used to run it, and the boys came out of the season fucking firing, and won like nine yeah. of their first 10 games, and in the bus go, fucking how good's this? And then the old wheels started coming off Tonya. Like you didn't see a piece of content for like eight weeks after that. So uh, they ended up even getting sponsors and stuff for their... Um, yeah. Uh, like their van and stuff and got it all decked out and shit. Fucking mad. Hectic. All right. Wrapping it up for the week. Ice. I mean, Jackson doing your fake ice stories, asking a bit of a and a yesterday on the, on the content <laughs> and sort of everyone sort of wanted your dog's name, your supplier and shit like that. And I asked the question, taking the piss and, and the bloke thought that I was your supplier. Bruh, no one wants to do the work, man. I would literally get like five or six DMs a day of people asking that. You got any two more people? Forty ers kit, man. I was like, "What are you talking about?" And then I like, surely this bloke's not that stupid. There's two more people reached out to me, and they're like, "Hey, bro, have you got that guy's number?" And I was like, "Oh, who are you talking about?" And then they screenshot your name. <laughs> so obviously, I just flicked you, they flicked you, your yeah, number. Man, to them. They but can have all my brothers I, off all the shit that he doesn't want. When's when's yeah. the next drop? When's the next drop, Jackson? Friday next week. Well, it's, it's kind of a little bit still up in the air, but um, I should know by today once I get the... I just need the essentials ticked by um, the government I see, here I, once I get the I seen, um, I seen I Love Ugly. I was about to say the same thing. Yeah, they got the approval yesterday. So yeah, so I'm still you're not getting it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just hard one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> same show. Um, but yeah, so hopefully next Friday, but it should be fun. But yeah, no, it was cool. It's um, yeah, a little bit of fake ice project with the Q&As. I just, I just keep Easy content. It's the best way to make content. It's the best way to make content. Q and A. Fuck, it's the best Oh way. yeah, thanks for spraying me in your live yesterday. I was like, who's what do I best? say? Oh, who's the drinker in the group? Oh, he's like oh, this high. Yeah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was being generous with that high call. Oh, as well. easy. Now, remember we went to Newmarket and you were just smacking back beers? And I'm like, fuck, relax. Yeah, I was trying to oh, catch up because you boys have been drinking since midday and I started at five. Yeah. I, I had I'm fucking afraid, scope in my ear saying the scope all the time. <laughs> What else are you going to do? Scoped out. Yeah, so scoped off out. the back of sort of like the Q&A stuff, I, you get asked the same question all the time. Jackson, you're starting to cop it as well. Everyone wants your supplier or what? I don't know. where You wrote down in the rundown. What was the question off the back of it? Fuck, what a host. Man. Oh, no, I just I wanted to know to ice, like trying to stay sane when people are constantly asking the same questions. Like, yeah, I don't mind it. it. I, I like that people are reaching out. Um but the idea, like maybe it's a, I don't know if it's a Kiwi thing or whatever, or just following you, but like the idea that so many people aren't willing to do the work is like, I don't even get angry at it. It just fucking confuses me. So like, I mean, you'd be, you'd get it, you'd be getting asked every other fucking day to, to give up all your tools of the trade. I mean, you pretty much have, but I mean, what's your sort of process with going through it, bro? But do you know what? I try to reply in the morning because it's usually when I'm in the best like, mood as well. So there's a few tactics that I've sort of picked up. If after a long day and someone's just going like, oh, fuck, you used to be nothing without NRL players. Like, fuck, I'll start to type like, fuck this. And then I just chill. But what I've actually done, I've actually automated all my responses. So like you said, I get asked four or five questions a day and they're pretty much the same thing. So one, I either write a blog about it. So I've written an ebook, how to start a clothing company. My number one question, oh, me and my friends are looking to start a clothing company. We just don't know where to start. Yeah, Boom, link in bio. So, and the other thing is I actually do, I go to um, settings and then text replacement. And then I write my responses in there. So, um, so if I write ZZZ, it'll send them to the blog. So instead of just being like sure with them, because you do get asked the same questions all the time. Spend, mm -hmm. spend, like you're a writer. Fucking spend, spend two days, uh, spend like two hours writing five blogs on how you found a supplier, how it does work like that. And then you just put it into a text replacements into uh, your, in your settings and send it. Fucking, right. then it, you, instead of coming off like a gronk, like, oh fuck, just look on Google, which I do sometimes. Yeah. Um, you can give them an actual like bit of value. And then you sort of leave it up to them. It's like, and I always associate this with like weight loss. Like everyone knows how to lose weight. Like you eat healthy and you train, but then like how many like obese people are there in the world? There's heaps. Mm -hmm. Even I'm out of shape. So like the, what, knowing what to do and how to do it is two very different things. I think what was annoying me and why I sort of went in with the question, it was like, you'd literally answered the same thing about six times. Like everyone's like, <laughs> and everyone was coming up with like a, diff, a slightly oh, different well. way of asking the same question as if they're going to just yeah. crack the code and you're going to go, Oh, it's, it's John Smith. Here's his website. Like you're like, go oh, on you Etsy, know, build the relationship, send the 300 messages, do all that stuff. I'm Lukey's vintage is starting tomorrow. Like it's going to be the, I know I've got all the tips. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> it's just, yeah. So 
that's why I was just like, surely if I like go in there and take the piss, people might see it, but then it just, it just like backfired and people are absolutely no, morons. No, yeah. <laughs> that was never going to work. <laughs> All righty, I reckon that's it. We got a, we hit 30 minutes today, 32 at the moment. We've only got 40 minutes on Zoom. So um, yeah, we'll wrap it up. Thanks boys. And we'll chat to you on Monday. Have a good weekend.